Explaining the Vietnam War In the 1800s, France would take over Vietnam and its neighbors, Laos and Cambodia, for its valuable exports such as rice and rubber. This new colony of the French would become known as French Indochina. Many Vietnamese people, however, did not appreciate the French taking over their lands, as farmers had their lands taken away and would grow poor, and the French colonists would only become richer. Then, during World War II, a man by the name of Ho Chi Minh would begin to organize his army, known as the Viet Minh. The Viet Minh were a communist group which looked to overthrow their French colonizers and get rid of the occupying Japanese forces. In 1946, the anger against the French colonizers would amalgamate into the First Indochina War, where the Viet Minh would fight the French colonizers. The United States would support the French in this war, as they did not want to support the communist forces of the Viet Minh. The United States believed in something known as the Domino Theory, which believed that if Vietnam fell to the communists, then surrounding countries like Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand would also become communist. The United States would send large amounts of money to the French in an attempt to help them win the war, but despite this, the Viet Minh would continue winning victories inside of the North. The French would eventually withdraw from Indochina, and in 1954, both the French and the Viet Minh would sign the Geneva Accords, which ended the war and split Vietnam into two. These two halves would become Communist North Vietnam and Anti-Communist South Vietnam. The South Vietnamese government was ruled by Ngo Dinh Giam, a name I've probably butchered, and was quite unpopular with its residents. The Northern Vietnamese, under leadership of Ho Chi Minh, would then send their troops down the Ho Chi Minh Trail into South Vietnam to support communist uprisings. During this, the United States would support the Southern Vietnamese with money and advisors. Then, in 1964, the North Vietnamese would fire torpedoes at an American ship patrolling the Gulf of Tonkin. The United States would be outraged by this. So, President Lyndon B. Johnson would sign the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, allowing American troops to land in Vietnam. The United States would then begin to bomb northern Vietnamese cities. However, despite the fact that they were attempting to bomb North Vietnam, these bombs would end up landing in other places such as South Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, many of these bombs still being in those countries today. The U.S. would then begin sending troops to Vietnam, and by the end of 1965, there were 184,000 U.S. troops inside of Vietnam. The United States originally thought that they would win the war quickly, as they had a better and more technologically advanced army, a better air force, and a better navy. However, Vietnam is made up of mostly dense jungle, and the U.S. forces were unable to handle that. Meanwhile, the North Vietnamese were raised and trained inside of the dense jungle, and so they would begin to stage a guerrilla warfare campaign. These guerrilla fighters in the South would be known as the Viet Cong, and using their knowledge of the jungle, would stage large ambushes and create large tunnel complexes underground. Even in South Vietnamese cities that were under the control of the Americans, the Viet Cong would stage sneak attacks and suicide bombings. Then, the Viet Cong would launch the Tet Offensive, in which they would attack hundreds of southern Vietnamese cities. Back in the United States, the war became quite unpopular with the public, as they could not understand why thousands of American troops had to die for one South Asian country not to become communist. Protests would break out against the war all across the United States, but despite this, the war would still go on. Eventually, President Johnson would stop sending troops to Vietnam, and would even refuse to run for another term. So, in 1968, President Richard Nixon would become the President of the United States, and would promise to end the war. Despite this, the war would continue. Then, in 1970, Norodom Sihanouk, the monarch of Cambodia, would be deposed, and at the request of the Khmer Rouge, Vietnam would invade Cambodia. Then, in January of 1973, the United States would sign the Paris Peace Accords, withdrawing almost all of the United States' troops from Vietnam. Despite this, the terms were then broken, and fighting would continue for another two years. Back in Cambodia, Phnom Penh would fall to the Khmer Rouge with the help of the Viet Cong in April of 1975. Then, not too long later during the 1975 Spring Offensive, 
the Viet Cong would take Saigon, modern-day Ho Chi Minh City, uniting both countries and bringing the war to an end. In conclusion, the Cold War was a horrible, bloody war, which was just another product of the ongoing Cold War. It would result in the deaths of around 2 million Vietnamese civilians and soldiers, and would result in the deaths of 58,000 American soldiers. This war is responsible for two dictatorships, one being Ho Chi Minh's in Vietnam, and the other being Pol Pot's in Cambodia. This war is also known as the Second Indochina War, and, after the Sino-Soviet split, the Third Indochina War would break out. Thank you for watching this video on the Vietnam War.